Today we are going to do a problem based on influence line diagrams. Let us read the question one time. Using muller bracelet law principle, draw influence line diagrams for the bending moment at D, middle point of span BC of a continuous beam shown in figure. Compute the ordinates at 1 meter interval. A two span continuous beam is given. In this continuous beam, we have to make influence line diagram for bending moment in the point D that is in the middle point of span BC. Let us apply a hinge in the point D. Then let us apply unit moment in the point D. Then let us separate this continuous beam into two parts AD1 and D2C. For AD1, the unit movement will be acting in the clockwise direction. For D2C, the unit movement will be acting in the anticlockwise direction. Let us take D2C and find the vertical reactions. First, I am going to calculate RD2. For that, I am going to take movement about C. In this case, I am moving towards right hand side. Clockwise will be positive and anticlockwise will be negative. RD2 is acting towards the point C in the clockwise direction. So it will be positive and the distance is 3. So 3 RD2. The unit movement is acting in the anticlockwise direction. So it will be negative. Finally we are getting RD2. Then we can apply the rule. Sigma V is equal to 0. Using the rule we are getting RC. For RC we will get a negative value. That means our assumption is wrong. We assumed that RC is acting upwards. But actually it is acting downwards. Now let us take AD1 and calculate the vertical reactions. In the previous step we have calculated RD2. We can easily calculate RD1. The values of RD2 and RD1 will be same, but they will be acting in the different directions. For RD2, we got a positive value that means it is acting upwards. If RD2 is acting upwards, RD1 should be acting downwards, but both of the values will be same. In this concept, we can calculate RD1. We have calculated RD1. Now we have to find RB and RA. First, let us find RB. For that, I am going to take movement about A. In this case, I am moving towards left hand side. Clockwise will be negative and anticlockwise will be positive. The unit movement is acting in the clockwise direction. So it will be negative. RD1 is acting towards the point A in the clockwise direction. So it is also negative. The distance is 7. RB is acting towards the point A in the anticlockwise direction. So it will be positive and the distance is 4. So 4 RB. Finally we are getting RB which is equal to 5 upon 6. Now let us apply the rule sigma v is equal to 0 and find out Ra. For Ra we will get a negative value that means our assumption is wrong. We assumed that Ra is acting upwards but actually it is acting downwards. Now let us see the formula to calculate the ordinates for Md. The formula is ydx upon theta dd. To find out ydx, we have to make sections in the beam. Theta dd can be calculated using the formula theta dA minus theta dc. Now let us take ad1 and make the sections and find out ydx. In ad1, there are two different parts AB 
and BD1. So we have to make two sections, one section in AB and one section in BD1. We are making both of the sections from the point A at the distance of X. Now let us calculate MXX that is the movement in the sections. We are going to calculate the movement in the sections from the point A. In this case, we are moving towards right hand side. Clockwise will be positive and anticlockwise will be negative. RA is acting towards the section in the anticlockwise direction. So it will be negative and the distance is X. So minus 1 upon 2 into X. RB is acting towards the section in the clockwise direction so it will be positive now we are calculating the movement beyond 4 meter so we have to consider the second section here we need this distance this distance is x minus 4 we have calculated mxx from two different sections so both of these terms should be separated by the dotted line. Now let us equate mxx with eid square y upon dx square. Then let us integrate. When we integrate this, we will get ei dy upon dx. For integrating x, we can use this formula. For integrating x minus 4, we can use this formula. Using the formulas, we can make the integrations. C1 is the constant. 2 into 2, we will get 4. 6 into 2, we will get 12. Then, let us integrate this equation. When we integrate this term, we will get EIY. Using the formulas, we can integrate these two terms. C2 is the new constant. 4 into 3, we will get 12. 12 into 3, we will get 36. In the point A, there is a vertical support. If there is vertical support, the deflection Y will be 0. Let us apply X is 0 and Y is 0 in this equation. We have to be very careful when we apply these values, we should not consider this term because this term is only applicable beyond the point B. Now we are applying the limits only in the point A. So we have to apply the conditions only inside of these. When we do that, we are getting C2. In the point B also, there is a vertical support. So there will be no deflection. In this case, we can apply the condition when x is 4, y will be 0. Let us apply c2 is 0, x is 4, y is 0 in this equation. After applying, we will get this equation. From this equation, we can calculate c1. So we have calculated c1 and c2. In EI dy upon dx equation, let us apply the value of C1. We know that dy upon dx is the slope. We have to find the slope in the point D, that is theta dA. In the point D, the value of x is 4 plus 3, 7. So, instead of x, let us apply 7. After applying 7, we are getting theta dA. In the EIY equation, let us apply the values of C1 and C2. In this way, we can make the equation for YDX. Now, we have to find the deflection in the point D. We know that the point D is located when X is 7. So, instead of X, let us apply 7. Finally, we are getting YD. Now let us take D2C and find out Y dx. 
in D2C there is only one portion so we have to make only one section I have made the section at the distance of x from the point D2 now let us make mxx the vertical reaction is acting towards the section in the clockwise direction so it will be positive and the distance is x then we have a movement which is acting in the anti-clockwise direction so minus 1 then let us equate mxx with ea d square y upon dx square now let us make the integration then let us integrate again after integrating two times we will get this in the previous step we have calculated the deflection in the point d here the point d is located when x is 0 let us apply x is 0 y is minus 15.5 upon ea in this equation when we do that we will get c2 in the point c there is a vertical support in the vertical support the deflection will be 0 so when x is 3 y will be 0 let us apply x is 3 y is 0 c2 is minus 15.5 in this equation when we do that we are getting c1 in the ei dy upon dx equation let us apply the value of c1 here we have to find the slope in the point d the point d is located when x is 0 so instead of x let us apply 0 finally we are getting theta dc in the eiy equation let us apply the values of c1 and c2 after applying we are making the equation for y dx now let us calculate theta dd in this formula let us apply the values after applying we are getting theta dd now we can make the formula to calculate the ordinates for md for the portion ad we have formed y dx for the portion dc also we have formed y dx and we have calculated theta dd let us apply all of the values after the simplifications we are getting these now let us calculate the ordinates from the point a to the point d we have to use this formula when we use this formula we have to be very careful from the point a to the point b we should not consider this portion only we have to take this part from the point b to the point d we have to take the whole formula to calculate the ordinates from the point D to the point C we have to use this formula using the formulas we can calculate the ordinates now using the ordinates we can make the influence line diagram now we are going to end this session thank you for watching this video